Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selam. Ala abdillahi ve rasulihi nebiyyina Muhammed. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Amma ba'd. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuh. I'm making this video uh, because of something which is a little bit troubling uh, and uh, quite concerning. Uh, that relates to Ramadan, but it's actually a wider issue than just Ramadan. It actually happens in uh, in a lot of things. Uh, and that is relating to a message that uh, came around and I got a copy of it. Some people asked about it, which was advising the people not to go and pray uh, Tahajjud in the Masjid. Uh, or not to pray Taraweeh and then to go and pray Tahajjud or Qiyamul Layl in the Masjid and calling this a bid'ah and attributing this to our Shaykh, Shaykh Nasir Al-Albani Rahimahullah Ta'ala uh, as well as a statement from Shaykh Ibn Taymin Rahimahullah In reality, what often happens is that people spread messages that often they don't really understand and that can have very, very negative consequences uh, for people and the reality of this message is that the outcome of it is to discourage the people from praying Qiyamul Layl and to discourage the people from going to the masjid uh, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Now I'm sure the author of that message did not intend that to be the case and he was a student of knowledge or she was a student of knowledge who wanted to share knowledge from the Shaykh with everyone. Uh, I believe that was most likely their intention. But just like Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, not everyone who wants good achieves it. And that is unfortunately the reality. Because the outcome of that message was sadly to cause a lot of people to leave the ibadat that they had been doing, believing that this ibadah of theirs would not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I wanted to explain a little bit of a background to this so that you understand. First of all, this issue comes back to whether or not it is permissible to pray more than eight raka'at in one night. I'm not going to call them taraweeh, I'm not going to call them tahajjud or qiyam al-layl. I'm going to try and simplify the issue and say, is it permissible to pray more than eight raka'at in a night? And the answer to that is, first of all, that our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never prayed more than eight rakah. Not in Ramadan and not outside of Ramadan as is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. And we have no doubt about this. Uh, it's not true like some of the people said where they said this is the taraweeh and he used to pray extra in this way. The hadith is very clear that he did not used to pray more than eight raka'at uh, inside or outside of Ramadan for his night prayer whether that was taraweeh, or whether that was tahajjud, or whether that was qiyam al-layl, he would not exceed eight raka'at sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the same time, the majority of the scholars of Islam from the early generations did not hold that eight raka'at is a limit. Rather, they held that this was the action of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that whoever wants to pray more than that is allowed to pray more than that. The evidence from this, some narrations from the Sahaba and indeed uh, the actions of the scholars who came after them. And they made a very interesting and a very valid point, which is to say that nobody here is disputing the Sunnah in terms of what the Prophet ﷺ did. But the Sunnah is not just what the Prophet ﷺ did. It's about how the companions understood what he did. And that is why we attribute the term uh, to it of following the early generations or following the Salaf, the early generations. Because at the end of the day, we understand the Sunnah the way that they understood the Sunnah. And the way that they understood the Sunnah and Allah knows best is that the majority understood that the Prophet ﷺ did not mean for these eight raka'at to be a limit. Rather, that is what he used to pray, and whoever wants to pray more than that can do so, and whoever wants to pray less than that can do so. Now, it must be noted that there is another opinion. That is the opinion of our Shaykh Sheikh Nasr, rahimahullah ta'ala, and a number of other scholars who held that the eight raka'ah is an upper limit, and you can't pray more than that. 
The issue here is not the opinion of the Sheikh or indeed the opinion of the other scholars. The issue here is spreading a message around for which the outcome of that message is something which stops the people from doing their ibadat. And it doesn't explain to people properly that there is a difference of opinion. It doesn't explain to people that the Lajna Ad-Da'imat, the permanent committee of senior scholars in Saudi Arabia issued a fatwa to say that there is nothing wrong with separating between Taraweeh and Tahajjud and praying eight rak'ah for Taraweeh and eight rak'ah for Tahajjud as long as you don't repeat the witr twice in one night. And this is the opinion of the Lajna Ad-Da'imat. But unfortunately, this is not shared with the people. And so what is shared instead is one a one-sided view of an issue which is a minority opinion held by a small number of scholars and it is presented to the people that this is the opinion of Ahl Sunnah and that anyone who goes against this is has fallen into bid'ah and so on and so forth and causing the people to doubt their ibadat causing people to doubt their proper practice in Ramadan causing people to not go to the masjid on what could be Laylatul Qadr this is not something praiseworthy and this is not something that Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala or any of the other shaykh would have had anything good to say about and Allah knows best. Rather the people should be explained to them. If you are from those people who believe that it is not permissible to pray more than eight rak'ah, then explain to the people the best way to do it. Tell the people go to Isha with the Imam, pray for example the first two rak'ah of Taraweeh with the intention of, of the Sunnah prayer for example, go back home, come back at Tahajjud time, and pray your taraweeh with the imam, begin with the imam and finish with the imam, your eight rak'ah, then pray your witr, and alhamdulillah. And explain to people in a way that will benefit them. But as for just saying to people that you going for tahajjud is bid'ah, then what is it going to be the outcome of that? The outcome of that is that people are going to miss Laylatul Qadr. People are going to become lazy. People are going to stop doing worship that they were doing. This is not hikmah. And that is why some of our scholars in Islam Rahimahumullah ta'ala. They said not every issue of ikhtilaf should be shared among the ordinary people. Because wallahi you share this issue of ikhtilaf and you're pushing people away from the deen, you're pushing people away from Islam, you're pushing people away from the salah with no dalil, with no evidence. You're not explaining to them the issue. You're not showing to them that it's two sides. Instead you're telling them that all of Ahl Sunnah are agreed that praying to Hajjud in the masjid is bid'ah. This is not true. Not even the majority. This is a minority opinion. And even if it is the truth, then still explain to the people how they should deal with it. Explain to the people that, for example, you go and you make, if you can get up for tahajjud and you're waking up at this time, it's better you go and pray in the last third of the night with the imam, begin with the imam and finish with the imam, make sure you attend Isha in the masjid, or whatever it is that the advice is going to be. But instead we see people sharing opinions that really they don't understand. And I know that one of uh, the students of Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala, who I knew personally, uh, and he used to advise me that not to pray more than eight rak'ah, uh, jazallahu khairan. And one of the things he used to say to me is, go for Isha with the masjid, then you know, you pray your sunnah for Isha, then you come back in the tahajjud time, you go, you join the Imam, you pray the whole thing, you pray the witr with the Imam. And they had a concern for people's uh, ibadat and people, you know, achieving the most they could in Ramadan. But as for just sending out random WhatsApp messages where really the sender doesn't understand the issue at hand and they're not presenting to people the proper issue. And if you're asking for my opinion, then I don't see any problem in praying more than eight rakah. And I think that this is the opinion of the Salaf rahimahumullah ta'ala, of the permissibility of praying more than eight rakah for the one who wants to. So if a person finds the ability to go at Isha and finish with the Imam, Alhamdulillah. And then go at Taraweeh at Tahajjud time and finish with the Imam, Alhamdulillah. But you don't pray with her twice in one night because the Prophet ﷺ forbade that. If a person can't manage to get up in the night, so they go and they begin with the Imam and they finish with the Imam at Isha time, Alhamdulillah. If a person finds it that they don't have time at Isha and they just pray the Jama'ah uh, with the, the Fard prayer and then they leave and then they go to Tahajjud, Alhamdulillah. But I have no problem with praying more than eight rak'ah uh, at night for the person who wishes to do so uh, 
and knowing that the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is not in doubt here and it's not what we are discussing, but we're discussing the understanding of the early generations of that Sunnah, which inshallah to the best of my knowledge is that there is nothing wrong with praying more than eight rak'ah. But if a person wants to limit themselves, then let them limit themselves in the way that is going to bring them the nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let them not make people doubt their ibadat. This is what we are really making this video about. A lot of people sending issues they don't understand, sharing those issues with people. Then people start to doubt their ibadat. We had this issue also happen in another issue, which is the start of the Fajr time, which happened. And I made a video about this in Bulugh al-Maran. People coming to people and saying your Fajr is not accepted. Your Salah is not accepted. Your fast is not accepted because your time for Fajr is wrong and this is wrong and that. And they're sharing issues. Wallahi, those brothers themselves don't understand those Masail. They don't understand them properly. They don't respect the opinions of the scholars in them, but instead they want to make tashkik. They want people to doubt the validity of the ibadah that they are doing. And that is not beneficial. Guide the people to what is good, but don't cause the people to doubt the ibadat. So if you're a person who is going for taraweeh and then coming back in the second half of the night for tahajjud in these last 10 days, and inshallah there is no problem with that. And don't allow people to send you know, messages around and swap messages around, which in reality are, they don't fully understand or the few of them that do understand and it's not explained in a proper way. So we hope this video has gone about clarifying that. We ask Allah to accept our qiyam and our siyam in this month and Allah knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.